There are some games out there in the indie scene that get a ton of hype during the build-up, and then end up being either really amazing, or just plain awful. Then there are some that are just average, and it makes you question what some of the hype was all about. Skeleton Boomerang isn't one of those games though. I think I would be correct in stating that the vast majority of you watching this had never even heard of the title. This is a shame, because, and I'm just going to come out and say it, Skeleton Boomerang is one of the most fun indie platformers I have ever played. It easily ranks up there with Cave Story Plus and Shovel Knight. So, if I can tickle your funny bone for just a bit, allow me to explain why any fan of the platforming genre should play Skeleton Boomerang. The story of Skeleton Boomerang feels like a platforming story of old, something akin to the old Castlevania games. You play as a man simply known as Hunter, who has come to the cursed island of death god Mr. Saturday, who is attempting to give independence to all the skeletons in the world, so they can burst out of their human bodies and have a good old jamboree. Plenty of milk will be had during Mr. Saturday's wild ride. While not a very deep story, it does its job fine in explaining the good guys, the bad guys, and providing any motivation for their conflict. It gets a little more interesting towards the end of the game, but it's clearly not the focus here. Although the story takes a backseat in this game, the writing is really fun. The dialogue is mostly non-existent, but scattered throughout are various signs that range from helpful tutorials to bad skeleton puns. These are a delight to read, and made better by the fact that they don't require any additional effort on behalf of the player. This is a game where simply going near the sign will prompt the text to appear, rather than needing to attack it or stopping to press a button. I prefer this with my tutorials, especially as I don't feel as though the game is stopping my momentum to teach me something that I may have already learnt. So while the story is a bit bare bones, the rest of the game is not. As a game rooted in the platforming genre, the gameplay is the most important aspect, and so it is a good thing that the platforming here is incredibly tight. While games like Shovel Knight and Freedom Planet have a clear basis for their games, something we see in a lot of indie platformers nowadays, Skeleton Boomerang appears to take elements from a variety of titles instead. For example, a game feels like a Mario game in the way Hunter moves and jumps, but he can't defeat his enemies in the same way Mario does. Instead, Hunter relies on his trusty Boomerang, which instead makes the game feel more Castlevania-like. It's a good mix that works, and these aren't the only two games that I feel this title took inspiration from. So. Hunter's primary mode of attack is the boomerang, and despite this being his sole method of attacking, the nature of the weapon allows for a lot of variety. Players could simply throw it at their opponents and catch it on the return. Or instead, the boomerang can be avoided altogether, and then the player can watch as it flies around destroying any enemy it hits and homing back in on Hunter as if he was the centre of its world. And this latter option takes some skill, but the game rewards the additional effort and creativity by recording combos and giving more points out for keeping up a chain. When you factor this in with a variety of boomerangs and special skills that Hunter can obtain throughout his journey, you end up with a lot of options for combat that all stem around one simple mechanic. Now, despite all my praise on the boomerang in this game, there is one ability Hunter has that is better. That is rolling. Rolling feels awesome, and allows Hunter to momentarily dash forward. He can do this on both land and in the air, and his mechanic essentially is taken straight from the Donkey Kong Country game. But it's not taken wholesale. Hunter's roll can't kill enemies like DK's can, and instead acts like a type of dodge. Hunter can roll through any attacks, allowing for you to speed through certain segments of levels, which will be a blessing for those who enjoy speedrunning, something this game also attempts to promote by tracking your clear time. The roller mechanic is so much fun to use that I actively wish to see it in as many platformers as possible in the future. While the vast majority of gameplay is platforming and combat, including bosses and sub-bosses, there are some times when it tries to change things up. For the most part this works, such as the combo challenges or racing levels, but it also brings up my first flaw with the game. Certain levels will give you a vehicle to ride in, and with the exception of one, these can become more annoying than fun. An accurate sense of momentum isn't there, and I felt I was sometimes blasted off in one direction by a simple tap forward. It doesn't happen often, but I did always dread those levels. One thing I never dread though, was the presentation. Right off the bat, the presentation for Skeleton Boomerang impressed me. The game uses pixel art to capture its world, and it becomes very obvious that the game's creator was primarily a graphics designer before this. All the characters feel bouncy and energetic. 
Despite not saying a line of dialogue, Hunter feels very charismatic and shows a variety of expressions that help to make me bond with him. But, what really takes the cake from a visual standpoint are the levels themselves. Nearly every stage in Skeleton Boomerang feels unique, with new tile sets and backgrounds to accompany them. While most games stick to a one world theme and run with it, Skeleton Boomerang is constantly changing things up. At one point you are on a snowy mountain, and then the next you are fighting a skeleton samurai in a Japanese pagoda. It is all highly detailed and very impressive. While on the topic of stages, I need to point out how utterly superb the level design is in this game. Everything flows so naturally in a stage, and I never once felt cheated or confused by what I was doing. Skeleton Boomerang is one of those platformers where every level brings with it a new mechanic for players to mess around with. It lets you understand it at the beginning, and then ramps up the difficulty later on. What's more, when these mechanics are revisited in later levels, they often come packaged with a twist of some kind that creates a new experience for the player. I never once felt like I was repeating myself, which is amazing for a platform with as many levels as this one. Another aspect of the stage design that is impressive is how it handles its hidden collectibles. Collectibles are a common trait in platformers nowadays that encourage exploring and replayability, but many games achieve this by being as obtuse as possible. Yoshi's Woolly World, as an extreme example, can hide some of its secrets in invisible clouds, which you would only notice if you walked over them, and many of which you wouldn't normally. This is bad design, but Skeleton Boomerang does a good job of making its collectibles, blue necklaces, well telegraphed and also well hidden. Sometimes the necklace is shown to the player but the way to get it is blocked off, other times you can see it but you can't access it until a later trigger is met, and other times it is hidden off screen, but a subtle yet noticeable piece of stage design will clue you in that something around is amiss. It was truly marvellous to see a game get its design almost 100% correct. Almost 100% though. It's not all perfect. If I had to complain about some parts of the game, it would be the pacing of checkpoints and food items. Stages can sometimes be long, up to about 6-8 to eight minutes, and this can be a nightmare when there is only one checkpoint and it's 3 quarters of the way into a level. You could slip in a level and die, only to find yourself taken all the way to the beginning of the level, resetting all progress outside of the hidden collectibles. I'll admit, it happened more times than I would have liked, and this isn't helped by the lack of food items in the game. Food is mostly hidden in a level in a similar way to classic Castlevania, and this can be a nightmare at times. You don't have a lot of help in the beginning, and as enemies don't drop health, you are forced to rely on these hidden food items, and they do not appear that often, and when they do, I often don't need it. Their placement in a level is often questionable, unless they come before a mini boss, but just like the checkpoints, there are too few of these, and I feel it needed more balancing. Let's move away from the visuals to talk about the soundtrack, which will rattle your bones with how energetic and enjoyable it is. The music uses a soundscape similar to the work of Jake Kaufman, and it works to remarkable effect here. With many games, I end up plugging in my earphones and listening to a podcast instead, but not with this one. Here, I listened to every song the game has, and it was often varied, energetic, and got me more excited to play the game. The sound effects are also satisfying, and relay all the information it needs to in a way that doesn't take away from the experience, only enhances it. The presentation certainly feels alive, and it acts as the perfect backbone to this entire game. My verdict is obvious, heck I sported in the opening, but Skeleton Boomerang is a game I highly recommend playing. It is on Steam and launches tomorrow, August 1st 2017. There are plenty of reasons Skeleton Boomerang is a game worth your time, I just discussed a bunch of them in this review, but ultimately the most important factor to me is a simple one. Skeleton Boomerang was fun. I enjoyed practically every minute of it, and even on the hardest bosses I never got angry. Rather, I felt satisfied after defeating them. I kept wanting to play more, and that's truly the mark of a great game. It may not try to invent the wheel, but this game certainly isn't the skeleton of another. It's not trying to revive some forgotten gameplay style or pay homage to any specific series, but rather is an amalgamation of all the best parts of level-based platformers, and that is more than enough for me. I want to thank Animes for giving us the opportunity to play this game early and review it for all of you. Uh, despite the fact that it's a free game, doesn't change my opinion on it. Uh, I give it as much a positive review as I can because I truly believe this game deserves it. And I hope I've inspired you all to go out and check it out. And if you want to hear more reviews from us, or if you want to hear some discussions and looking into other video games, then subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. 
and follow us at Twitter at All Source Gaming. And you can follow me specifically at Mr. Nintendo. Uh, if you like Smash Brothers, I do a lot of Smash Brothers related polls and the like. And I've done a few on indie characters as well, such as Shantae and Shovel Knight. So if you like other indie games, then make sure you follow us as well, because there are plenty of them coming out and we've got a couple of exciting exclusives to share in the future. Until then, guys, catch you later.